Two reporting tonight about the alarming tension between former President Trump and top military leaders at the Pentagon. In their new book, The Divider, Trump in the White House 2017 to 2021, Peter Baker and Susan Glasser say the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, was on the verge of resigning in a truly scathing letter. Let's go to our Pentagon correspondent, Oren Lieberman. Oren, this resignation letter that Milley wrote but never sent he had some very, very tough words for the former president, uh, to put it mildly. Give us, give us what you know. Absolutely. This is in the days and weeks following January 1st, that infamous walk of President Donald Trump and some of his top national security advisors, including Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Mark Milley, to Lafayette Square. It was in that video that we saw Milley walking right next to Trump before... Shortly after that video, Milley realizes what's happening and peels off. That, of course, is not what's remembered from that moment. According to this article, this excerpt from this new book, Milley was torn about what to do in the days following that and even penned a number of different drafts of a resignation letter. Here is part of what he wrote in one of the versions of this letter. I'll read this to you. The events of the last couple of weeks have caused me to do deep soul searching and I can no longer faithfully support and execute your orders as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Milley wrote, according to the New Yorker. It is my belief that you were doing great and irreparable harm to my country. I believe that you have made a concerted effort over time to politicize the United States military. Milley at the time was doing everything he could to make sure the military didn't get into politics. According to the excerpt that we're reading from this book, he viewed Trump as trying to drag the military into politics, whether that was through the Insurrection Act or how he portrayed the military or how he wanted to use the military. He had many conversations, Milley that is, about whether to resign. Ultimately, he decided not to. And here is another excerpt from, the, uh, from this book. F that S, Milley told his staff, according to The New Yorker. I'll just fight him. If they want to court-martial me or put me in prison, have at it, Milley added. But I will fight from the inside. So that gets a bit into the thinking behind whether Milley should have stayed in his position or left in his position at the end of the Trump administration, especially as Trump was essentially clearing out Pentagon leadership and putting in uh, some of his loyalists there, and Milley was trying to figure out his own way forward at that point. Wolf? And it's important uh, that Susan Glasser and Peter Baker, both truly excellent journalists, are also reporting that Trump didn't want any injured U.S. military veterans at a July 4th parade he was planning. Is that right? That's right, according to what we're reading here. And this stems from Trump at the time going to France to see a Bastille Day celebration, which included a military parade. He was uh, enthralled by it. He loved seeing the splendor, the power, the force of the military parade. But according to this book, what he didn't like seeing was all of the injured service members in that parade. So he told his chief of staff at the time, retired General John Kelly, to make sure that in the parade he was thinking about, that he was dreaming about, he didn't want to see injured service members. It was Kelly who told him those are the real heroes. Kelly was right. Uh, Oren Lieberman, thank you very, very much. Let's get some more on all of this. Joining us now, CNN military analyst, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. Uh, General, thanks so much for joining us. How angry must General Milley have been to write such a forceful resignation letter? And what does it tell you that he decided in the end not to resign, but instead stay on and fight from the inside? Wolf, that letter was phenomenal. When I read it this morning as that article came out, it was obvious that General Milley was going through an extremely emotional and psychological time. Uh, he was trying to do the right thing for his services, not only just for the Army, but for all the joint services as the chairman. But that letter was extremely unusual. Uh, you know, the military debates and in seminars at the War College or at Leavenworth, we debate about resigning from the service under extreme conditions. I've never seen or could comprehend the kind of letter that General Milley wrote that's published in that, in that excerpt. Several pages long, it not only says, hey, I'm resigning or retiring uh, because I don't think I can live up to your standards or I can't do the things you think I should be doing. It literally points to President Trump in every single area that he uh, was in violation of the Constitution or, in, in General Milley's view, the legalities of the office. So it was just phenomenal, and I'm sure General Milley really struggled with the decision to stay in office. Yeah, I'm sure he did. You know, Glasser and Baker also write, uh, General Hurtling, that former President Trump actually asked his chief of staff, John Kelly, why his generals couldn't be more like the German generals who reported to Adolf Hitler. Does it surprise you at all that the former president of the United States it was does. looking 
for that type of guidance, obedience, I should say? It, it, it does not, Wolf. As we've said so many times on your program, uh, President Trump seemed to be enamored uh, with generals like Patton, probably because he saw the movie. He was known to not be a historical buff. Uh, he didn't see those kinds of things in books, but he would watch a movie like Patton and say, that's the kind of general I want, the tough guy, the guy that is out of central casting. But as, as General uh, uh, Kelly, retired General Kelly, reminded of him, uh, the, the Germans had several instances during World War II where there were assassination attempts. So perhaps instead of just watching Patton with George E. Scott, uh, probably President Trump would have been well served by watching the movie Valkyrie with Tom Cruise about German General Klaus von Stauffenberg, who uh, attempted an assassination attempt on Hitler. Yeah, good point. Uh, retired General, uh, Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, thanks so much for joining us.